we want to appreciate the presence of all of you in this place today. Like I said all these other times, when we see you like this, we know you've conquered so many things. One, one enemy to conquer, one enemy to conquer is fear. The other enemy is what all your friends, neighbors, media, and everybody else is saying. Um, those are the enemies that you're supposed to conquer for you to be able to come to church. And I really appreciate you. Hallelujah. I am ex- I'm so excited to share God's word and to be a minister of God's word in this time and hour. Praise the Lord. Now wave up your hands and shout praise the Lord. Wave up your hands and shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I'm not hearing you shout praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I, I was telling the other church I, I know the world thinks differently than we think as the church of Jesus. Uh, the, this is my thinking pattern and I, mm-hmm. I need to share with you so that you know on how I look into the whole thing. This is how I think uh, is that if you can be left alone by yourselves in your houses and we don't gather share God's word here, we will wonder on how much attacks you'll find you'll get from the devil. You know why? The, the enemy has so much power when we are individuals. The Bible says one chases a thousand, but two chases 10,000. So when we are together, we, we push lots of demons at one time. I don't know how it works, but spiritually that's how it works. Secondly, the other thing that I want you to understand is that when you are by yourself, there are lots of things that are going on in your mind. Lots of things. Hey, maybe when I sleep, some of you, you don't even sleep, you sleep seated. Thinking that when you sleep, if you can catch sleep, (laughs) you'll wake up in heaven or something. Do you understand what I'm talking? So you need God's word to know that you are still here. Amen. Amen. I am telling you, I I know I'm a minister of God's word more than any, in fact, the profession, if I may put it like that, the profession that is mostly challenged than all professions, it's pastors. Because Doctors and nurses are already in a hot soup. Are you hearing me? So it's us who must talk to doctors, we must talk to nurses, we must talk to politicians because they are all stressed. Lift up your hands if you understand what I'm talking about. Amen? Amen. So I don't know how politicians can, can see the way we, we see these things. Because if they don't, they think church is useless. We are the only institution in this world that, that can give the world hope. All of these people are stressed, all of them. And they need the word of hope. And um, we still do it even when we are in our houses, but there is a lot of work. Every minute I am counseling people over the phone. So I imagine if I can put all these people together in a church setup and I talk to them once, my job will be reduced. Do you understand what I'm talking about? And when I see 50 people, if I can have 100 people, 500 people just in one gathering, it 
it has solved me of 500 counselings individually. Do you understand what I'm talking about? So this is my major reason why churches should gather. Because it, it solves a lot of problems. Amen? I don't have a problem with people that are coming to church. I have a problem with people that are not coming. I don't have a problem with people that are coming, that are going to church. I have problems with people that are not going to church. Because those are the ones that think alone. They think alone. They've never said, the only news they hear is bad news all the time. So many people are dying. So many people are affected, infected, and contracted. So many people are doing this. So many people. They have never had a good message to say, Jesus is the king. He's on the throne. He's able to save us from all this trouble. They don't hear that message. They only hear bad message. They don't hear good news. They only hear bad news. And when you only hear bad news, you talk bad news, you think bad news, you will sleep bad news because of the kind of news we are listening. Amen? I, I thank God. I thank God. God has, has ordained a church to be the only institution. And I, it's only that people look down upon church. If there is anything that, that people say first, is church. Are you church people? Hey, you church. And they don't know what we're doing. Amen? But I'm trying to say we, we really appreciate uh, all the people that are able to listen to God's message all the time. I'm telling you, you're not doing anybody any favor, you're doing yourself a favor. We can't live without God's word. Jesus said, without me you can do nothing. And before, before this pandemic, that's why I always tell people, I thank God to be a preacher in this age. Paul, Silas, Peter, John, James, all those guys, they never experienced what we're experiencing now. Amen? They were suffering some other things, but they never suffered what we are suffering. Amen? They were killed, but they never saw people dying in the pandemic. So, we are blessed to live in this age. I'm telling you, on the other side, we'll have a testimony to say, truly, God is alive. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. It has been my prayer. We, we, we will have a problem with people who don't believe God's servants and don't believe God. Bible says, believe in my servants and believe in me. Trust in my servant and trust in me and you shall prosper. Amen. Amen. If you don't believe in God's servants and you don't believe in God, well, that's another problem. So this thing is rife. But we need to believe. We need to, you know, there is no time where you need to trust God's word like now. Amen. The word of the Lord until the devil understands that there are children of God in this world that can still trust in God's word. Amen. Amen. We're not shy about that. I say we are not shy about that. I say we are not shy about that. And the reason why you have to be here is because the whole world is stressed. And as it gets stressed, you need to get the word of the Lord. To give you courage and hope to face your future. Because everybody, like I said, everybody is thinking, oh, it's like tomorrow I'm dying. That's how everybody thinks. And I will, I've got news for you that you're not going anywhere. You are not going anywhere. This is not a joke. You know why? There are two reasons why the devil can't kill you. Two. The first reason he can't kill you because God is on your side. God's power is within you. That's the first reason. The second reason why the devil can't kill you is because when he kills you, he has lost. When you are still alive, 
When you are still alive, he has hope that maybe tomorrow you can be his customer. So you're not going anywhere. Come and do this to yourself. Say, me, I'm not going anywhere. In Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Shout hallelujah. Shout praise the Lord. You're not going anywhere. We won't allow it. The Bible says whatever we allow here on earth is allowed in heaven. And whatever we disallow here on earth is it is allowed in heaven. Whatever we permit here is permitted in heaven. So we don't permit you to go. I don't permit you to go. You're not going in Jesus name. Amen. 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 I don't care whether the devil attacks you or not. But you will survive it. You will survive it. You will survive. When they count, when they count people that have survived, you will be one of them. Amen. Amen. You're not going to be part of statistics. You are not. I am. These people do. Do you really understand what a man of God is? When you are happy and things are fine, we use less. But find us when things are tough. That's when we speak a word and it works for you. And you know there is a man of God in the city. Man? Shout praise the Lord. Let, let, let me read you a very simple scripture. The scripture you know so very well. And then we do some little preaching. That, so that you can go home, relax. And, uh, and uh, the good Lord will help us. Now, now, listen to me very, 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 very carefully. I sometimes think that if only if only scientists could know, if only governments could know what the church is, we would close all these other things and only open the church. So unfortunately, we don't know. We don't know. And we forgive everybody for not knowing. But Let's read the word of God. Psalm 27, I want us to read verse number 4, 5, and 6. Let's, let's read that, that. It reads as follows. One thing I have desired of the Lord that I will seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, now listen to this. And behold what? The beauty of the Lord and inquire in his temple. One thing I have desired and that I will seek that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. I always tell you that when the Bible talks about all the days of your life, it means Good days and bad days. I will dwell in the house of the Lord in good days. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord in bad days. I will dwell in the house of the Lord when there is no pandemic. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord when there is a pandemic. I will dwell in the house of the Lord when there is sickness in the country. I will dwell in the house of the Lord when there is no sickness. I will dwell in the house of the Lord when things are fine. I will dwell in the house of the Lord when things are not fine. I will dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Now I want you to listen to the reason why David says he wants to dwell in the house of the Lord. He said so that I can behold. So that I can always look at the beauty of the Lord. <laughs> 
so that I can always look at the goodness of the Lord. It is when one is in the house of the Lord whereby you say, oh, the Lord is good. Praise the name of Jesus. Now, listen to me. In this era, if I can close you, all of you, each one of you in, in your own houses and we leave you to stay there with television and internet and check you after with you not mixing with anybody and check you after a month, all of you will be sick. All of you will be sick. How will you be sick? Because the thing that we we fighting against now is not dust. It's not rock or stone particles. We are not fighting stone particles. We are fighting a spirit. It's not something that you can close it out with your door and lock it out. It's a spirit. We are fighting spirit. We are fighting what? Spirit. So, you will never close out a spirit with a door. And you will never, even if they would build a wall all around you with no door, with no window, a spirit will always be there. A spirit does not need a window or a door to come in. That's why Jesus one time when he rose from the dead because he was in a spirit body, when he raised from the dead, the disciples were in a house closed and he got inside and greeted them. They wondered, how did this man come in? A spirit can be closed out. Amen. 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 We need the power of God even to fight this spirit called COVID-19. We need God's power. Amen. 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 Now the second reason why you will be sick is because you will be hearing bad news only. Bad news. On how many people are dying. You won't listen on how, how one has risen from the dead. Because we've got one man that rose from the dead. And that man, when you believe in him, that's the man that can give you hope. That's why the Bible says, the spirit of the one that raised from the dead, it's in you. The spirit of the, the power of Jesus that raised Jesus from the dead is living in you. And if that power is living in you, God will also raise your mortal bodies. Shout praise the Lord. Shout praise the Lord. And what am I saying to you? I'm saying to you that David says to behold the glory of the Lord. To behold the beauty of the Lord. In the house of the Lord we behold God's beauty. God is beautiful, Masalwan. I said God is beautiful. He is beautiful. And what do I mean when I say God is beautiful? I mean that now the things that the devil is trying to do in this world, in your life, in your family, and in the country South Africa, when God is with us, I am telling you, I am telling you, those things won't affect us. Of course, you need to believe it. You need to believe it. So, in verse number 5, the Bible says, watch this, for in the time of trouble, for in the time of trouble, he shall hide me. When trouble comes, he takes you and hides you in his pavilion. He shall hide me in his pavilion. Hide me. Now, one thing that the church of Jesus is not aware of. <laughs> You're living in this time of pandemic. But your life is hidden. In God's pavilion. You need to know that. And when you know that, it will take fear out of your life. 
I say your life is not in the open. You're not exposed. Your life is hidden. I said the Bible says God will hide you in his pavilion. In the New Testament, the Bible says our lives are hidden in Christ. In the heavenly places. Hidden. When we say hidden, we mean you can't be seen. Amen. COVID will never see you. I said COVID will never see you. Why? Because your life is hidden in Christ Jesus. Shall praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But you need to believe this. We can preach good news to you, but if you don't believe good news, you'll still be affected by bad news. You've got to believe good news. This is good news. Your life is hidden. <sighs> Walking in the same street, but you are hidden. Going to the same shop, but you are hidden. Amen. Staying in the same family with everybody, but your life is hidden. The Bible says, he shall hide you in his pavilion. Shall praise the Lord. I like to lead a hidden life. A life that is hidden in Christ. Whew. Where the devil will never do you any harm. Where all these pandemics will never do you any harm. Now we have, a, we have an example of exactly what God did in the Old Testament. When the children of Israel were in Egypt, so many of you will remember the story. There were so many plaques, about ten of them. Not just one. So many plaques. It was this after that, this after that. And it never attacked the children of Israel. You know why? Because the Bible says they had to smear the blood of the lamb on the doorposts of their doors. So that when the angel of death was hunting on which one to kill, when it arrives in the houses of the children of Israel, when it sees the blood, it will pass by. It will pass by. I am talking the blood of Jesus Christ over your life. And I am saying, every time the devil of COVID comes your way, let it see the blood of Jesus Christ and pass by. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. What am I talking about? I am talking to you to know that the blood of Jesus Christ has covered you. We are wrapped in the blood of Jesus Christ. And with that knowledge, you can walk tall. Now, now listen to me. When you feel a little pain in your body, don't prepare a funeral for yourself. You're still here. Sometimes the pain will come where they say when the pain comes there. It is this. It will come in the chest. You know we have got common pains in the chest these days. When pain come on the chest, you know it for sure that you are a child of God that is hidden under God's pavilion. Shout hallelujah. And trust in the power and failing power of Jesus and you shall live. I say 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 you shall live. Amen. 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 Now listen. There is the blood of Jesus Christ that can cover you to a point where no devil can do you any harm. Amen. Amen. The problem with Christians, I always say it and I will say it every Sunday problem with Christians is fear. Fear will make you to see things that are not there. Fear. Fear will kill you even before the actual death. Fear will make you to prepare for your funeral even before you die. 
fear will make you to so that the government is so aware. And the blood of Jesus, as long as you are in this church, you'll, you'll dish out things, people eat, and when you wake up, you'll find you're still alive. You won't die here. You won't die here. <laughs> so don't dish out don't dish out your properties. Because when you wake up, you'll find yourself poor. And you have given everybody everything. Because you won't die. You're not going to die. Amen. God, listen to me. God honors faith than any other faith. The Bible says when you believe, you can say to this mountain, be thou removed and throw yourself into the sea. If you do not doubt in your heart, whatever you said, it will happen that way. So I'm not doubting. So why should I have a problem? I say things that I'm not doubting. So why do you have a problem? Because the Bible promises me that if I say anything and I don't doubt, it will happen exactly that way. So I'm saying, you won't die and I don't doubt. I don't doubt. I don't doubt this God. You're not going anywhere. But let's read the last scripture and then we close. I don't want to keep you too long. I don't want to keep you. I just want to give you a word of encouragement and you go home encouraged. Knowing that the Lord is with you and God is prepared to help you all the way, all the time. In the name of Jesus Christ. Shout hallelujah. Shout praise the Lord. Shout praise the Lord. Shout praise the Lord. Shout praise the Lord. Shout hallelujah. Right. That's number six. Let's get it from verse six. Verse six. And now my head shall be lifted above my enemies all around me. We don't understand. And now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies all around me. Thank you. Therefore, I will offer sacrifices of joy. Is that not powerful? My head shall be lifted above all my enemies all around me. And what I will do, I will just give God sacrifices of happiness, of joy. Now, this somebody would not know on what joy does to your life. And David calls it the sacrifice. Of joy. When things are bad all around you, you give God the sacrifice of joy. You, you, you tend to be happy and thank God for you are safe, you are alive. Amen? Amen. So, he says, I'll give the sacrifices of joy, offer the sacrifice. In his tabernacle, I'll sing, yes, I'll sing praises to the Lord. I'll sing praises to the Lord. Now, listen to me carefully. As we close. He says. He has set me on the rock. And he has lifted my head up above all my enemies around me. He has lifted my head. My head is lifted up. And he has set my life on the rock. And my head is lifted up. All above my enemies. That's what he is saying. Now listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. What God is actually telling you is that now he does not only hide you. He put you so high that there is no devil that can ever reach you. Some of the things that you worried about they are so low when you know the truth. God has set you so high that there is nothing that will ever reach you. What you need to do is to all the time 
give the sacrifices of joy and praises to the Lord. Say, so, Father, I thank you. Every morning you wake up, don't even think about what the whole world is thinking about. Because it will stress you. It will bear your vision. You will never be able to see things that are ahead. You will only th see things and talk about things that are happening. Let me tell you this. Ordinary people. Ordinary people talk about things that are happening. But powerful people talk about things that are to happen in the future. If you hear a person saying, people are dying of COVID, that person is ordinary. Because ordinary people talk about only what is, they only see what is happening now. But we see things beyond what is happening now. In Jesus name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So let's talk about what you're going to be doing next year. Let's talk about what you want to achieve in the next five years. Let's talk about the businesses you want to start when you come out of this thing. Let's talk about something serious. Amen. Amen. COVID has come. It's the thing of the past. It has come. We have nothing to do with something that is here. We have so much to do with something that is still to come. Shout praise the Lord. So serious people talk about things that are still coming. Ordinary people. Oh, Jesus. While away their time, the devil is, has a way of, of delaying you. He gives you things to think about now. And he forgets that you've got the future to live. I've got people here that are seated here who thought in 2021 I want to build a house and they've put that on hold because there is COVID. Build your house. Build your house. If you wanted to buy a car, buy a car. That's why me, you will see. You will see. You will see. Whilst people are being you know, dragged by what is happening, I'm doing extraordinary things. Like never before. Check me. The things I do now, I've never thought of doing them. Kurungari satan unkwati. The devil has pricked me. Have things that you would never have in this life. <laughs> think of things that you never thought you would think about in this life. Because everybody else is thinking about small things. And I know what you are talking to me about. I know what is going. Is it a small thing when people are dying? I'm not saying that. Don't change what I'm saying. I'm talking about you that is alive. Think about things that are greater. Who's can change? Amen. I didn't say that. What I'm saying is that now, whilst everybody is thinking about what is happening now, where now, because you're not ordinary, think about your future. Now, when you think about your, listen to this, when you think about your future, it gives you a reason to live. It gives you a reason to live. <laughs> when your life has ended, because you are only thinking about things that are happening now, why then are you supposed to live? Because So it's Because of other things which which you do not have any power over. 
you understand what I'm talking about? Never allow your mind, your mind to, to come to a cul de sac because of things that you never created yourself. Amen. Keep on thinking. Keep on thinking of studies. Keep on thinking about that dream of being a doctor. Keep on thinking about that dream of being that powerful person. Keep on thinking about that business that you wanted to do. Keep on thinking about buying the dream car you wanted to buy this year. Keep on thinking about that. Then, when God looks at you and says, oh, this one has a reason to live. Devil, don't touch them. You can't touch that one because it has a reason to live. But if you are always saying, hey, I mean, even if I declare life on you, when you cancel it with your words, what, 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 what will I do then? Amen. Please let's make time for prayer all the time. Please let's make time for prayer and let's pray for the nation. Let's pray for our president. Let's pray for everybody. Let's pray for our health workers. They are in serious trouble. And let's make sure we pray for these people in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. God bless you.